Yeah, hello, good evening. This is Dr. Jennifer, the First Lady, and I'm here to welcome you to our Kingdom Church Kitchen with our chef, uh, Minister Linda. Uh, we have so many chefs, but tonight we're going to show you one of them is Minister Linda, and she'll be showing you how to cook the chapati, which is unleavened bread. The reason is because uh, Archbishop have pronounced we have to eat the unleavened bread for seven days. Already three days have passed. Now we want to show you what to do the rest of the days. Uh, you can make chapati in your house. We have been eating chapati in the church. Thank God for those people who brought chapati, who made the chapatis, but now you can make yourself and i believe you're gonna receive the seven blessings the archbishop have released today and uh, those blessings are number one they're gonna be an angelic visitation or angelic guidance and also you're gonna have your angel coming for you to lead you to go to the blessed place or to the place where god has organized for you number two god will become the enemy of your enemy number three there will be divine prosperity Number four, you're going to be healed because God going to take away the sickness away from your midst. Number four, you're going to have a long life. You know, die, but live to declare the glory of God. Number six is inheritance. I'm telling you, you're going to claim your inheritance as you eat this chapati or this unleavened bread. Or oh, your inheritance is coming back to you. And the last one, which is number seven blessing of Passover, is you're going to have and declare that this is the year of special blessing for you and your life and your family in the mighty name of Jesus. So welcome to the Kingdom Church Kitchen. Minister Linda, yes, you can now show us uh, about how to make the unleavened bread. Welcome. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Jennifer, for this opportunity. So yes, um, as that bishop has uh, instructed, uh, we're supposed to eat the unleavened bread for seven days. So to make the unleavened bread, we've got a few ingredients which you need to have. The most important one is the flour. That one, that one is the chapati flour. It's the best for it. And the best one is the medium one. Although you can also buy the plain one, but this is the best. You get it in Tesco, five kilos. So it costs about two pounds, two pounds 50. And then next, uh, you need uh, fine salt. You also need uh, castor sugar. It's the best because it it dissolves very fast in water. And then also, you need uh, sunflower oil. And then also, you need uh, lukewarm water. A bit more on the hotter side, handheld hot temperature about 30 to 40 degrees of the water so what you do um, using a clean spoon you take one spoon of caster sugar add it into the warm water and then you take a bit of the salt you want to create a balance the reason why i'm mixing like this is so that because the flavor that you develop here is the flavor that's gonna transfer onto the chapati so it's very important you get it right at this stage so you stir until it all dissolves and then everybody has different tests so if you like it more on the sugary side you can add more sugar or if you want it more on the salty side you can add more salt so after that you can put that to one side then you will take your flour you take your flour and then pour it into the mixing bowl okay right into the mixing bowl like that just enough uh, depending on the size of your family and then make a well in the middle a well is just basically a hole but the professional term you say you make a well in the middle and then you take your sunflower oil pour a little bit 
where that you've created a well. The oil is important to make the chapatis soft. And then next you'll take your lukewarm water, pour bit by bit. And then slowly you start bringing the flour in the middle like that small movements as you stir. Keep adding water slowly, gradually. Yeah, as you need. This is called kneading, right? You bring the flour together and then you use your knuckles to bring it down again like that. You do that. It's important you pour the water gradually because then you'll not if you have you don't have enough flour you'll not be in a bad situation so it's important you add slowly slowly until all the flour in the pan comes together so you continue like that you're almost there okay what you are looking for is a soft and workable dough, not very hard, and again, not too soft. Okay. So continue kneading like that. And then what you're looking for is to make sure the sides of your mixing bowl are clean of flour, as you can see. So if we've incorporated all the flour into the dough, okay? So continue kneading for just a short while to develop the gluten. The gluten, that is the, like the glue of the, that, that holds together the chapati. So the more you work it, the more you're developing it, okay? So... At that point, our dough is good to go, it's like that, soft, and it needs to rest for at least 30 to 40 minutes, right? And then very important, very, very important, you need to cover it with a damp cloth or clean film on top of it, yeah? So what we are going to do, we are going to cover our dough and then leave it to rest for 30 to 40 minutes. Okay. So, at the end of it all, this is how, this is how the dough which has rested and relaxed needs to look like. You see? The gluten has developed it's relaxed you know you're not you're not struggling with it it's really really soft it's following the movement of your hands right so this is quite good and we are ready to go on to the next stage so what you do you take a bit of flour sprinkle on your work surface the reason you're doing this is so that when you're rolling it, it's not sticking onto the rolling pin. So what you want to do now, yeah, this is a nice soft dough. Yeah, spread it out like that. This is a good way of doing it, especially if you have lots of chapatis to make within a short span of time so you also dust your rolling pin and then slowly you start rolling it backwards and forwards not too much and again sprinkle some flour like that okay you're looking to make something like a rectangle or a square at this stage because you're gonna be cutting strips. Okay. So, 
that's how we do it and then next uh, using a clean spoon you take your sunflower oil and then you just spread it on like that okay spread it on like that make sure it is well oiled okay and then uh, when you finish you take a knife again you dust it with flour so now this is where now it begins to get a bit practical and where it will determine the quality of your chapatis you cut strips like that okay so what you want to do starting from the very corner like that you start rolling yeah don't be very tight and not lose either so you roll like that until you get the size of a golf ball like that so you, if it's small you continue again that should be very easy like that so you get something that size and then what you do what you do you just press it down like that and again you put it on a tray somewhere and cover it with a damp cloth and then you continue again from where you stopped carry on like that it's really really easy it's doable because the dough is really nice and soft you know if it's small you continue okay up to that size like that the reason why you're rolling it like this is to create layers and these layers when you cook they kind of open up and the air that goes in is what makes the chapatis to be nice and soft so the more layers you get the softer the chapatis the flakier and the nicer it is yeah so okay right so you carry on until you finish the door so okay we'll put this to one side then we'll carry on okay so at the end of it all once it has relaxed you'll get something like this then you, again you dust the work surface remember you you made layers so you have to be gentle on it okay so dust like that then slowly slowly you roll using a small rolling pin like that and then you dust flour, you turn over. It's important you turn over so that you're not overworking one side. Again, do like that. Until you get to the size which you want. Not too thin and not too thick so that it cooks. If it's too thin, it's going to be crispy. That's not what you're after. Okay. Like that. So now our chapati is ready to whatever you put your whatever on at this point you don't add any oil at this point i'll let you know what stage you're putting the oil on okay make sure your pan is hot but not like smoking hot otherwise you're going to burn your chapatis and that's not what you want okay 
So what you want again is a non-stick pan for good results. Although if you're brave enough, you can use any other even aluminium pan, but the non-stick you'll get good results. So you lift your chapati, put it there. Okay. And meanwhile, meanwhile, in the meantime now, have your oil ready. What's going to happen now, it will start cooking. And then once it has to, once it starts having the, like, the brown specks, you turn it over. So, okay. In the meantime, as this one is cooking, you can multitask and start making, rolling the next one. Because remember, you have like about 10, 20 to make. So it will be handy. Like that. Okay. Like that. Okay. So it's very easy. Okay. Just slowly, don't put a lot of pressure because then that way you'll not get even chapatis. Okay. So now at this point, once you start seeing like things like, um, you know, bubbles or the chapati trying to rise, it's a good time to turn it over like that. You can see the brown specks from far. So what you want to do, a bit of oil from the center, you work your way round. Yeah, not too much oil. Yeah, and as you're white work, as you like brushing the oil on it like that, remember the bottom part has also started cooking as well. So the beauty of it is that by the time you're done, the, the other side is ready to flip. So carefully again, you flip over. As you can see, it's got the brown, brown specks there. Yeah. And as you can see, it's also rising. I have to tell you that the layers are cooking inside. So the chapati is not going to be hard. And also as you continue rubbing the oil on this side, the other opposite side is cooking. So always on medium heat so that your chapati is not burning. Okay. And then when you check and voila, you see it's beautiful, nice color. That's what you're after, golden brown color, not burnt, not nothing. You know further than that that's the color you're looking for okay so by the time you finish again as we said the opposite side is cooked nothing more than that and then you put it onto a clean plate like that and then you take the other one lift it there and then it's really important to cover the to cover your chapatis when they are done. Yeah, it's really important to cover them. Why? Because they remain soft that way. Otherwise, if you leave them, they dry out. So it's really, really important to cover them immediately. You cook it, you put it straight, you know, you cover it with something. You could even cover it with the, um, a clean plastic bag you know so you continue like that rolling others if they are there okay so this one is ready to flip as you can see it's got the brown specks on far again uh, yeah you start from the center working your way around and as you're doing that Every area you're pressing, remember it's cooking. As you can see, the, it's rising up. So which means the layers are cooking and the chapati is going to be nice and soft. Okay. So 
when you're ready to flip it the opposite side as you can see again So in total, each chapati will be flipped four times. Twice without the oil and twice with the oil. So it's important you note that. So once that's done, we flip it over again. There we go. Our 